Hi everyone who's watching the Nifu TV's Great Shogi documentary video. I am Hidechi from YouTube. Now if you let me introduce myself a little bit, I'm a Japanese amateur shogi player and I'm posting a lot of shogi videos on YouTube which are shogi lesson videos for beginners and also videos that show many professional shogi games and so on. And because of those videos, I happen to get an opportunity to get acquainted with the people of Nifu TV. And now you're seeing a collaboration work of Nifu TV and Hidechi in this extra, in the DVD. Now, what I've been asked to do by Nifu TV is that I make these extra videos in which I'm going to show you the three games that are featured mainly in the documentary video with my own style of video construction that I use for my YouTube videos. So here I'm going to show you all the moves in the games and give you quick explanations for them so that you can get a better understanding of the games in the documentary video. Now those three games are number one, the pair shogi game played by women professionals and amateur players. And secondly, the final match of international shogi tournament. And lastly, number three is the game in the women professional title match. So now let's start by showing you the first one. Oh, and I'll make these videos given that you already know the basics of shogi, so if you're not familiar with shogi basics, maybe you can also refer to my shogi lesson videos on YouTube. Alright, so here we go. The first one we'll be looking at is this pair shogi game, which took place on 9th of November 2008 as a show event in the 34th shogi day, and it was played on the stage. Playing black were a top flight woman professional player, Ichiyo Shimizu, and an amateur player, Frederick Potier, from France. And playing white were also a top flight woman professional, Rieko Yauchi, and an amateur player, Johann Drexler, from Germany. So uh, first up, Shimizu played pawn to 7f, then Yauchi plays pawn to 3d, and now Potier plays pawn to 6f, and Drexler pushes the pawn up to 4d. And once again Shimizu plays, she moves the silver to 6h. So this is how a pair of shogi goes. They play in turn. Yaoji plays silver to 6b. And uh, in a pair of shogi game, the players are not allowed to make discussions with their partners, of course. So the most important thing in playing a pair of shogi is not about outthinking your opponent. Uh, more importantly, you have to make sure that you and your partner are thinking in the same way because uh, you see if you could find a really great move a really fantastic uh, brilliant move that your opponents can't think of you shouldn't be just playing that because uh, for instance if you make a brilliant sacrifice of your piece and if your partner can't understand what that move means it's gonna be just a loss of your piece right so in terms of that aspect these players are doing pretty good they all know what they're doing. You see both team is going to play static rook strategy and basically they're going to castle in Yagura castles. So they're playing with good teamworks. Now pawn to f. Okay, but here Drexler makes an interesting move. Silver to 4c. So now white is not castling his king into Yagura's castle. Because this castle now is called a snow roof which is a pretty uncommon one. But I think Yauchi and Drexler had discussed about this in advance and had decided to play snow roof strategy. Now the basic concept of snow roof is uh, they're gonna keep the bishops here in this diagonal and push this pawn later and eventually attack on this file uh, with the help of this rook, also this knight. All right now Shimizu plays pawn to 2e Pawn 60, Potier goes for the pawn exchange in the second file, really good move. Rook recaptures, pawn drop to 2c, rook retreats. Now black have got a pawn in their hand, pawn 1d, gold 6g from the right, rook 6b. As I've told you, white is going for the sixth file, pawn 3f, pawn 7d, preparing to use the knight. Now Shimizu pulls the bishop to 7i. This is how we use the bishop when we play Yaguda Castle. Okay, what opens the bishop's diagonal, pawn to 4e, silver develops to 3g. Okay, so finally, Drexler attacks on the 6th file, pawn 6e. Black takes it, and then 
Yao Ji develops the knight over to 7c. Well, this is a very good move sequence. Uh, instead of this, they can also uh, move the knight first and then attack. But in this case, black has an option of not taking it. So, it is better for white to make this pawn attack first. Because uh, now if black doesn't take it, it means white could just save one move of this knight leap. And if black takes it, as in this game, now white can move the knight. Okay. Alright, then pawn to your place, pawn to 4f, and white's not gonna take it. Knight takes the pawn on 6e, attacking the silver. Okay, now basically, one option is to uh, save the silver to 6f, but white's gonna be able to keep attacking after this. So Shimizu didn't like that, and she dropped a pawn to 6f. Now, obviously, black's gonna lose material. Knight takes the silver, and knight recaptures. Oh well, taking with the gold upward might have been better, but anyway, Potter took it with the knight. Okay, so here black has lost material, but by this pawn drop on 6f, Shimizu managed to stop white's attack. Now white takes the pawn on the fourth file, but well, this is what black wants. Black can take it with the bishop, making a powerful attack on the lands, but Yaoji makes a good move here. Pawn to 5e blocking the bishop. Uh, now maybe black should have taken this pawn by the bishop, which will result in this bishop exchange, but Potter took it with a pawn, so Drexler drops the pawn to 4e. Really good move. Now bishop has to go back, so now Yaoji can take the pawn on 5e with the bishop. Really good move. Okay, Potter drops a knight to 6e. Well, if he wants to put a knight in there, he could also, uh, move this knight over to 6e just to make the same attack. Maybe he felt uncomfortable with this uh, bishop diagonal attacking lance. I don't know. Anyway, he dropped the knight to 6e. Silver runs to 6d. Pawn 5f. Bishop goes back. Okay, now here, pot your place. A really cool and solid move. King to 7i. Really cool. But Drexler does that too. King to 3a. Now Shimizu plays pawn to 3e. Uh, now if Yaochi takes it, Bishop would recapture and he's gonna attack the rook. So Yaochi didn't take it. She moves the rook back to 6a, avoiding that Bishop's diagonal. Well, it's again a cool move. Potty pushes the silver up to 3f. A really nice square for the silver. And then Drexler took the pawn on 3e. Well, maybe this wasn't very good, because now the silver can recapture it by making another great step towards the king. And you see, this silver is powerful, making a powerful influence against white's king. Okay, now Yaoji plays pawn to 70. Okay, really good move. It's a weak point of black's camp, because the knight's head is always weak. Black ignores that and drops a pawn to 4d. White takes it. But well, black's not gonna take it. Actually, Shimizu makes a really good move here. It's pawned up to 2d. Well, yes, black should go for the second file. Pawn recaptures. Okay, now instead of just taking it, Potter finds a good move here. It's pawned up to 2c. Now, uh, if white takes it, now this silver move would be stronger. So, Drexler didn't take it. He moved the bishop to 3c. Silver advances to 2d, bishop runs. Okay, now one interesting option would be uh, discarding this pawn by promoting. If white takes with the gold, the silver can uh, advance here. And uh, if the king takes it, silver to 3e, discovery check. But Potter didn't do that. He dropped the pawn to 3c. Well, maybe it's also good. Uh, knight takes it. Okay, now Shimizu pulls the silver to 3e, offering the silver trade, but Yaoji drops a pawn to 2g. Okay, mysterious drop. Well, uh, black can take it. Uh, if black takes it, I don't know, maybe another pawn drop. Uh, let's take it. And then white can block the rook by dropping a pawn. Well, uh, let's take the silver first. And then white can block it. But anyway, 
Potter didn't take it. He swung the rook over to 3h. Okay, then another pawn dropped to 3g. Okay, Shimizu took it this time. Now, this pawn can promote, but White doesn't have time to do that. White takes the silver. Potter takes it with the rook. Well, uh, taking with the bishop might not be good. The rook's attack is blocked, and uh, also this uh, silver fork can occur. Although it's not necessarily a good move, uh, maybe I can just take it and drop a pawn. Uh, but anyway, Potter took it with the rook. I think it's better. Now, uh, black is threatening to uh, drop its pawn to 3d. So here, white has a good tactic, and I'm pretty amazed that uh, Drexler had known this tactic. It's pawn drop to 3d, a cool pawn sack. Uh, the rook will take it, but now black can't drop its pawn to 3d anymore, right? Okay, so white takes the pawn on 7f. Well, if black takes with the gold, uh, this drop would be uh, powerful, and also, uh, you see, this uh, 6g square is too weak now. Uh, for instance, the pawn drop, and uh, if the gold takes it, maybe silver drop, gold runs, and another pawn drop. White will keep attacking. So basically, uh, a gold shouldn't move diagonally forward like this, leaving a vulnerable square behind. So, black didn't take it. Black moved to knight over to 8e. Yeah, it's better. Okay, now, uh, white should have kept making attack with, for example, uh, this silver drop. But here, Drexel played silver drop to 8d. Well, actually, this is an awful move, if I may say. It's not good for one to use one's piece to a square that is not an issue. Maybe he didn't want to uh, allow this knight to promote here, but well, it's no big deal, right? Okay, now Shimizu plays a really good move. Rook to 2d, attacking the second file, uh, also giving room to uh, another pawn drop to 3d, and also now black is threatening to uh, drop a pawn to here, because after the goal takes it, black can drop a pawn to here, because you see the rook covers this square 3d. So. Uh, this rook move is really good. Now Yaochi plays silver to 8e, taking the knight. Well, once white dropped the silver here, white has to take the knight. Otherwise, this silver drop would be totally pointless. Okay, so here black promotes the pawn to 2b. Gold takes a really interesting move. And now Shimizu plays pawn to 4c. Uh, well, in the first place, if the gold takes it, black can also... Uh, drop it zero to here, forking the rook and the gold, or black can also uh, drop a pawn, as I've shown you before. So, uh, white didn't take it, so bishop to 5a. Okay, uh, now at this position, I think I see a really uh, interesting attack, uh, in case you might want to see it. Uh, it's zero to 4a, attacking the gold in 5b. Uh, you see, the king can't take it, right? This gold will fall. Uh, so, you see, white can't block this rook with a pawn, uh, because it's two pawns, you see? So now this pawn is an awful piece. And now uh, if this gold runs, 0 to 5 be on promote, for the rook, bishop, and the gold. So I think, uh, this silver drop is pretty interesting. Uh, but black didn't do that. Pot here just dropped the silver to 2c. Well, actually, this drop is also very good. I mean, maybe it's better than uh, the zero drop to 4a, especially when it's a pair shogi, you should make ordinary moves. So, uh, here, actually, the only way for white to get through this attack is to move the gold to 3b, a really interesting move, but interestingly enough, this is the correct move. Uh, but here, Drexler uh, dropped the zero to 1c, uh, which is not an effective defense, because now the silver can take the gold, uh, and after the silver recaptures, now black can drop a pawn this time, because now black has a gold in the hand, so black dropped a gold to 2b, really powerful check. Oh well, other than this gold drop, actually uh, this rook move to 5d 
is also an excellent move uh, because you see this is a threat made starting from this bishop sack to 1c and it's really hard to uh, defend against this threat mate uh, but black didn't do that but just dropped the gold uh, because after king goes to 4a which is the only available square for the king actually there is also a really good move for black in this position too and well frederick pot here found it is this rook to 60 taking the silver uh, actually this kind of piece the silver in this case is called a hostage piece which can be captured anytime when it's needed and this is where it's going to be taken uh, it's brilliant rook sack because if the rook takes it the white king is checkmated by this silver drop so here after this rook's move the game is almost over but the rule of this pair show you was the woman professional player has to make a resignation so Drexler played bishop to 5b well he has no choice uh, but here she misses plays zero drop to 5c okay solid attack and here Yauchi resigned it was a really exciting game as a show event okay that's all for this game hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching